Hello, my name is Stacy Alfin. I'm the Director of Adolescent Services for Memorial Hermann Prevention Recovery Center. I have a Master's in Addiction Studies and I have been in the field for about 15 years. Today we're going to review the top 10 epidemics of teen addiction. The real question is, what is an epidemic? The word epidemic means that it's a widespread occurrence of an infectious disease in a community at any particular time. In 2012, the Center for Disease Control announced that prescription drug addiction had reached epidemic proportions. In 2010, the Office of National Drug Control Policy reported that 47.5% of all college students had smoked marijuana. These are just some examples of what an epidemic is. In this webinar, we are going to review the top 10 drug epidemics of teen addiction. We'll be covering the most deceptively innocent drugs, the easiest to get drugs, the most difficult to overcome, the most popular, most destructive, most dramatic transformation, the fastest growing, the latest trend, the most unknown, and the cheapest. So let's start with synthetic marijuana. Uh, mm -hmm. Synthetic marijuana was initially created using a chemical compound found in marijuana. However, over time, distributors began using random chemicals on potpourri-like substances and marketing it as incense. Since its inception, synthetic marijuana has fast become the drug of choice for adolescent drug users, second only to marijuana. One of the reasons for the popularity is because it is undetectable in average drug tests. Typically, the drug is packaged in small square pouches and it looks like a common kitchen spice such as oregano. It's often referred to as spice, K2, fake weed, or any other variety of fad names. Synthetic marijuana is used in the similar manner as marijuana. It's either smoked alone or added to a rolled joint with tobacco or marijuana. It can also be baked into food such as brownies or made into a tea, although this is a less likely route of administration. The effects of synthetic marijuana are highly unpredictable and are different for each person and with each type of synthetic marijuana. Some of the long-term side effects include seizure, kidney damage, lung damage, brain damage, and even death. This is Emily Bauer. She's a 17-year-old girl from Cypress, Texas. Many of you probably heard the story that aired right before Christmas 2012. Emily was using fake marijuana that she bought at a local gas station. She asked her boyfriend to take her home because she had a headache. Turns out she wasn't having a headache, she was having a series of strokes. I had five strokes on December 7th, 2012 from smoking synthetic marijuana. It was just a few days away from my 17th birthday. It has impacted my life in multiple ways. I cannot do things a normal 18 year old would do, including walking, reading, writing, or driving. I bought it over the counter at a gas station, so I thought it was safe and legal. This is a quote from Emily's Facebook page posted this past October 31st, 2014. As a result of her situation, Emily and her parents founded SAFE, Synthetic Awareness for Emily. You can go to her Facebook page to learn more about Emily's story. Another recent case happened in July of 2014. Connor Eckert, a 19-year-old California teen, fell into a coma after smoking synthetic marijuana for the very first time. Five days later, he died. In 2010, over 11,000 people visited emergency rooms after using synthetic marijuana. 59% of them had used no other drugs. On October 8, 2014, Four years after President Obama signed the Synthetic Drug Abuse Prevention Act, Houston and Harris County passed a law making synthetic marijuana an illegal substance to sell, possess, or use. One of the easiest drugs to get is associated with common over-the-counter cold medications. Teens call it robo-tripping. A study in 2011 found that 5% of high school students are actually abusing cough medications. You may hear a teen speaking about these as Dex, Robo, Skittles, Triple C, or Poor Man's PCP. Robotripping is taking medications containing DXM or dextromethorphan in large quantities for the purpose of getting high or experiencing hallucinations. The most common source of DXM is cough and cold medications that contain DXM. Some common side effects 
of robo tripping include feelings of dizziness, lightheadedness, um, stomach upset, nausea or vomiting, restlessness, and sometimes drowsiness. The severity of the side effects can vary depending on how much is used. Many adolescents consume at least 30 pills at a time just to get the desired effect. When using cough medicines, the teens are not focusing on the alcohol, but rather on the DXM. More than 125 cough and cold medications contain dextromethorphan. This abuse of over-the-counter cough and cold medications is a growing and potentially life-threatening trend among kids ranging in age from as young as nine years old to 17. In fact, nearly 10% of American teens have admitted to getting high on medications containing DXM. Now we'll address the most difficult drug to overcome, which is methamphetamines. Methamphetamine is so addictive that scientists giving lab animals unlimited access to meth will actually take it uncontrollably until death occurs. Some experts estimate that 90% of people who try meth even one time become addicted. Some of the common side effects are dilated pupils, rapid speech, insomnia, changes in weight, restlessness, mood swings, sweating, acne, and extreme paranoia. Typically, methamphetamine is taken orally. It can be injected, snorted, or smoked. Some common ingredients in making methamphetamine include alcohol, brake cleaner, freon, cat litter, muriatic acid, and antifreeze, just to name a few. These are yearbook photos taken of a young girl named Angela Fettino. On the left, you can see her at age 12, and on the right, you can see her at age 15. Angela began using methamphetamine and within three short years died from her addiction. Now we'll talk about the most popular drug, marijuana. Marijuana is the most common illicit drug used in the United States. California has been working toward legalization for recreational use and hopes to reach its goal by 2016. Despite a steady stream of state laws approving marijuana for medical and sometimes recreational use, the drug is still illegal under federal law. The federal government considers marijuana a Schedule I substance, meaning it has no medicinal uses and is at a high risk for abuse. In 2013, 7% of 8th graders and 18% of 10th graders and 22% of 12th graders used marijuana within the past month, which, in, which is an increase from 5.8%, 13.8%, and 19.4% respectively in 2008. The amount of THC, the chemical in marijuana that makes you feel high, has been steadily increasing over the past few decades. In the 1960s, the THC content was around 2%. In the 1980s, 4%. In 2012, 15%, almost triple. Marijuana is typically smoked, however, it can be added to baked goods. So when you look at this slide, in the middle you see a normal healthy brain. On either side, you see what the brain looks like um, from a 38-year-old who has been using marijuana very heavily on weekends for 17 years. The most destructive drug is crocodile. It's estimated that somewhere between a few hundred thousand and a million people are injecting this deadly drug. Crocodile gets its name from the green, scaly, and bumpy skin that users get at the injection site. The scientific name for crocodile is desomorphine and is in the opiate family. Ingredients used to make crocodile include iodine, paint thinner, gasoline, alcohol, and oil. The crocodile high has a very fast onset but a very short duration and it is more potent than morphine. Crocodile is injected and it can cause abscesses, gangrene, and thrombophlebitis, which is when a blood clot develops in the veins and can lead to death. Most users of crocodile only live two or three years and suffer from rotting body parts. Users will inject the drug anywhere in their body from their feet to their forehead. The prognosis for recovery from this drug is poor and the few who do recover are left with permanent physical and emotional damage. Xanax is the drug with the most dramatic transformation. Xanax can be found in medicine cabinets across the country. It is the most commonly prescribed psychiatric medication 
and the 13th highest selling medication in 2012. Not surprisingly, the number of emergency department visits related to Xanax abuse climbed from more than 57,000 in 2005 to nearly 124,000 in 2011. The easy access to acquiring Xanax has made the drug popular with teens and young adults. However, there are serious side effects, including overdose, toxic reactions, respiratory depression, hypertension, seizures, cardiovascular collapse, and even death. Teens and young adults who use Xanax to get high often combine it with alcohol. And this can be a fatal combination since both benzodiazepines and alcohol are a central nervous system depressant. Heroin is the fastest growing comeback drug. Between 1995 and 2002, the number of teenagers in America, ages 12 to 17, who used heroin at some point in their lives increased by 300%. Heroin abuse among first-time users has increased by nearly 60% in the last decade. Adolescents report sniffing heroin, smoking it, thinking it's gonna be less addictive. However, it only takes three days of consistent use regardless as to how it's used to become addicted. Most heroin users inject heroin. Heroin typically has additives such as caffeine, flour, chalk, talcum powder, and powdered milk. These ingredients do not dissolve fully when they're injected into the body and can cause blood clots that lead to lung, kidney, and brain problems. The latest trend is a drug called tramadol. Tramadol is not an opiate, but it is considered to be opiate-like because it affects the brain in the same manner that an opiate would. It's also extremely addictive, like an opiate. Many adolescents use prescription drugs found in their home medicine cabinets. Often, family members have leftover medication from surgeries, dental work, or some other illness that they no longer need. Tramadol and other prescription drugs like Oxycontin and Vicodin can easily be found in home medicine cabinets where teenagers are looking for drugs to use to get a high. Some of the side effects from taking tramadol is nausea, vomiting, drowsiness, and headaches. Seizures from tramadol are reported to occur at least once in about 87% of persons prescribed to tramadol. The likelihood of seizure increases with the dosage. People abusing tramadol are at a higher risk of experiencing a seizure. Fortunately, on August 18th of 2014, the DEA placed tramadol on a Schedule IV of the Controlled Substance Act. The most unknown drug to parents is the drug called Molly. So why is Molly an epidemic? If you look at this chart, you'll see that Molly use with 8th, 10th, and 12th graders has increased over the past year and it continues to rise. Molly is a synthetic psychoactive drug that has similarities to both stimulant amphetamine and hallucinogen mescaline. The drug is popular with teens and young adults and is often used at parties called raves. Molly creates feelings of increased energy, euphoria, emotional warmth, and empathy towards others. It also distorts sensories and time perception. However, once the drug begins to wear off, people report experiencing agitation and aggression, they get shaky and restless. Often, the person's pupils are dilated and they remain dilated even in really bright lights. Seizures are extremely common in overdoses of Molly and they can occur rapidly and are usually manifested by changes in consciousness, emotion, vision, and skin sensations. This is a picture of Jessica Mary Hunter. She's a 21-year-old college student at Texas State University. She used Molly one time while attending a musical festival in Austin. She'd never used it before, and within just a few hours, she suffered a seizure and cardiac arrest. Two days later, she was dead. The cheapest high is inhalants. According to inhalant.org, one in five students has inhaled a chemical to get high by the time they are in eighth grade. There are a thousand common household products that can be used for intoxicating purposes. Parents of younger children should be aware of the household aerosols in their cleaning cabinet. Often, young teens curious about getting high will first try huffing or inhaling aerosols. 
Aria Doherty was a 14-year-old who was found dead after taping her nostrils closed and huffing a can of computer air duster. Another similar story was Crystal Salcedo, a 12-year-old girl who died shortly after huffing Freon. And Stedman Gage, a 22-year-old man, died from huffing air duster. The list goes on and on. The one common theme, no one in their families knew that they were huffing. Do you know a teen who needs help? Here's a list of resources. You can try the National Directory of Drug and Alcohol Abuse Treatment Programs. Go to the Partnership for Drug-Free Kids. You could seek professional assistance through inpatient therapy or outpatient therapy, or find support groups in your area, such as Narcotics Anonymous or an alternative peer group. So there are several levels of care for adolescents who need assistance. They might need medical detoxification, a 30-day inpatient program, a partial program, or an intensive outpatient program. Spread awareness throughout your community. Share this with other parents of teens. Addiction ruins lives and can be prevented.